Hi friends, I'm Annie with The Wild Nest and I'm here behind me here is a bunch of different products and tools that I feel that are must-haves for creating art and uh, some of them are product specific and some of them aren't and I just wanted to share those with you right now especially if you're going to join us with a subscription model you'll want to have these things kind of on hand in the event that I say grab your exacto knife or whatever okay let's get started all right so I usually on my drawing table always pretty much have two glasses of water um, glass because it's pretty sturdy and you can see through it no big deal um, just for clean water and for to clean out my brushes I also always have an old towel that I can just clean my brushes on it's just a real affordable way of cleaning your brushes um, if you want to you can also have paper towels um, I have those as well uh, but you go through those pretty quickly um, handy wipes. These are great for cleaning your fingers off uh, with adhesives and um, inks. This is a really good way. Sometimes they're permanent on your fingers, but this does a good job of cleaning them off and also cleans off your, your substrate as well. Uh, painter's tape. So I usually have blue painter's tape and just regular masking tape. Um, this is These are both great if you burnish them down to seal your substrate with, especially in watercolor or to create lines and stuff like that. Okay, brushes. So brushes. So I am, um, you know, honestly, I'm a fan of these cheap Royal paint brushes that you get at Hobby Lobby or Walmart. Super cheap, super good. They don't flake. They last forever. These have been through hundreds of people over the last four years. Uh, so I highly recommend these. These are really good. I'm, I'm of the opinion that if you know how to paint, you, it doesn't matter what kind of brush you use because you're going to know how to paint uh, the end product. And so, um, but so, so you don't have to invest so much money on these paint brushes. They are great quality, but, but I'm not a, a brush snob. So, um, however, uh, watercolor brushes, you might want to pay a little bit extra for them because they do kind of make a difference. Um, our beginner classes use these from Hobby Lobby and they were pretty good for beginners. The only thing is the handles, they flake if you leave them in water. And so you had gold flakes all over the water. So, I mean, they're great to start, but not for like major pieces of, of watercolor. So I recommend you get a, a set of flats for acrylic and then a set of rounds for uh, watercolor. All right, sponge applicators. So these are great for aging papers, and I, I've got this new addiction with junk journals. And um, so aging uh, papers, really good sponge applicators, or putting like light, almost like light washes uh, with ink around your pages or canvas or whatever, good to have. They come in little refillable um, ends in the rectangle and the circular. I can't talk. All right, a heat gun. So this is one of my favorite tools, a heat gun, uh, in this age of wanting to for things to dry quick. And because in the studio we had to, we only had like two hours for class, so we had to have these. So um, ideally you want things to dry by themselves, but when you don't have time, heat gun is great. All right, a brayer. So a brayer is a great little tool for um, taking out air bubbles off your substrate. When I say substrate, I'm talking either canvas or wood or whatever you're, you're doing things on. It's great for like when you decoupage something and you want to just burnish it out evenly. This is a great little, it's a roller tool is basically what it is. All right, a uh, bone folder. So I never thought I would use this, but boy, I tell you, with the new junk journal addiction I have and paper, um, I use this a lot. This is really a great little tool. I mean, it's kind of multifaceted tool. You can you can flatten things, you can score things. You, it's, it's great. Also, I always keep a um, old spoon, a soup spoon, kind of rounded one. And this is really good with photo transfers. You can actually burnish a photo transfer with an old spoon. Um, and so it's a great little tool that you might even have around the house. Along with that, old credit cards and um, driver's licenses. These are great to spread gessos and modeling paste and stuff. This is just a great little palette knife is what it is. All right. 
clips. Like I said before, these things are great to hold, um, really good to hold things um, when you don't have another set of hands, uh, especially with, with papers. Um, even chip clips work great, or the bind, the large binding clips. Those are good. They're called buffalo clips. I don't have any with me right now, but but these are great to have. I got these at Lowe's, really really cheap. You get a set of them. All right, what else? We have an awl and a pokey tool. So these are like little pokey tools. Basically, an awl is good for punching holes in paper or fabric, punching holes, period, marking things. And then the pokey tool is just a sharper, smaller um, little version of an awl. And both sides are really good because depending on what kind of holes you want to punch, those are great to have. I got those at uh, Home Depot. Um, watercolor paint. Okay, so again, watercolor paint, you know what? It's um, it's a matter of preference. I really like this uh, Kuretake set that I got on Amazon. It was not expensive at all, and it's very creamy. It's really good pigmented watercolor. Highly recommend this if you're getting serious about watercolor. Um, these little palettes are really good as well, uh, but they're, to me, not as vibrant as the creams. And so uh, we had these in class and stuff. Great to take around, really versatile for travel but um, it's personal preference. I'm not, I'm not really a fan of actually doing finished work with these, but, but they're great. And I'm not gonna recommend a certain, um, they're a, a certain pr uh, brand, cause there's Koi, there's, uh, there's Winsor Newton, there's Prima, there's all kinds of really good ones. And they're all, you know, priced affordably, pretty, pretty good. Um, and then there's also tubes, you know, if you wanna get a tube, this is a student series, so it's pretty cheap. I got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, if I were to get some really nice ones, it would be the Daniel Smiths, um, but for practicing, this is perfect, really affordable. Same thing with acrylic paints. Um, you know, you can invest money in acrylic paints, but if you're just trying to start out, um, you know, these are awesome. The folk art and Americana, I mean, honestly, I did murals with them. And they come with every color, so you don't have to mix. If you want to get a little bit more fancy, Grumbarker's great. Golden is great, heavy-bodied um, acrylics. I use a lot of Pebeo because it was the one that I sold in the store. Uh, Master's Touch is kind of a student grade um, from Hobby Lobby. That's a really good. It's really affordable. Um, and then Liquitex or Liquitex or Master. I don't, anyway, they they Liquitex. I think it it is, um, is now doing a heavy bodied acrylic, but golden is really good. A little pricier, but, but I highly recommend golden. All right. Auxiliaries. Auxiliaries are the mediums that you use along with paints. And so I recommend you get a black gesso and a white gesso. And you know what? Gesso honestly is, is gesso. My personal opinion. Don't, waste your money on expensive gesso. This is gonna be covered up. It's just kind of a primer. I've even used primer, like kilts. And so, you know, uh, yeah, gesso's gesso. Just get a black and get a white. And um, like I said, I'm using Studio 71, which is from Amazon. And then I'm also using the Pebeo. And then I use Liquitex and I use any kind of gesso I can get. But if you really want a big gallon of stuff, just go to Home Depot and get a, um, and get kilts. It's just as good. Molding paste. Molding paste. Same thing. Um, Golden makes a great one. I mean, they make such great products, you know. Um, I don't get a special paid whatever, whatever from Golden, but I do like their products. They're really good. Um, Pebeo also makes a great molding paste, but again, this is something that you're just going to swipe on a stencil or whatever, and then you're going to cover it up. And so really all you want is the, the texture. And so, and I've never had a modeling paste flake on me. So, so uh, they're all pretty good, all pretty good. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? We've got um, cutting tools. So you wanna get a fabric pair of scissors and you wanna get a paper pair of scissors, okay? Don't mix the two because it'll dull, they'll dull. And so designate one of your, um, one of your scissors. I love the Tim Holtz scissors. This is the little one. They come in a bigger one, but I really like this little one. 40% off at Home Depot. You can't beat that. And then get you some um, designated fabric scissors as well. And then also along with the cutting tool, get one of these little X-Acto knives that you can just pop off the, the blade. That's always good to have if you want to do straight cuts. 
um, for paper and sizing and all that stuff, scoring, little X-Acto knife. All right, um, a paper cutter. So these little paper cutters, actually I've had bigger ones, but this one's like really good. It's really affordable. And it just, you know, it has a little ruler and stuff. These are good to have, little bitty ones. I've got the guillotine from way back. Uh, it's just bulky and, and big. So these little plastic ones are, are really good for paper crafting. Okay, this is one of my faves. So when I first saw this, I was really, really intimidated by it. But um, once I started using it, wow, it is like an awesome, awesome tool. So, you know, it will, um, it will like squeeze grommets and um, gosh, anything, little brackets and little, and it makes holes. And the cool thing is that you can actually, you know, get paper and go deep with it. So if you need to reach, like when you're doing a, a journal, you can really reach a long way with this thing. So definitely worth the money, these crocodiles. This is my second one that I've been through. And I got this one in the state sale for 12 bucks. So it was definitely worth it. So I really like this. If you don't have a crocodile and you need uh, holes, just have a hole punch. Um, that's fine too. And you can make some little holes with it. All right, and uh, let's see, the glues. So this glue is like the bomb. I've just now started using it because I'm doing a lot of fabric collages. This is, this is amazing. I can't believe I never used it. I'm, I'm like crushing on it. Beacon Fabric Fix. And it, it, um, it's great glue for fabric to paper, paper to paper, paper to wood, paper to glass, fabric to glass. I mean, it's really versatile. It dries clear. Great, great um, glue to have on hand. And then Aline's Tacky Glue, everybody has that. That's that's pretty good, paper to paper. Eh, it works okay with, with fabric, I guess it does, but I prefer the fabric fix for the fabric. Um, and then, you know, just a, a, a glue stick. You can get that at Elmer's Dollar Store, whatever. Just have one of those. And then also this one, I think you have to order this one online too. Probably Amazon has it. But um, it's Imagine, and it's called On Point Glue. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. I've, I've used it for about three years now. But what it is, is this little bitty um, stream of glue that comes out of that of that tip. Do y'all see that? That little tip? And um, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's, it just gives you a really, really fine line for tight places. And then it's got this cap that um, you have to, it's like a needle, and you have to like, get it into the hole so it'll prevent your your tip from from clog, clogging up on point glue highly recommended by imagine it's really good stuff all right uh permanent markers okay so permanent markers so i am a real fan of faber castell they have every size you can imagine they have the bold, the big ones, you know, those are great. And these are permanent, so you can paint something and then dry and then go right over it with these things. They have the brush tips. They have the um, the fine tips. They have really Faber-Castell affordable. You can find them, Michael's Hobby Lobby, anywhere. They're really great brand. I also like Le Pen, which is another permanent marker, but you can only get these at like art supply stores, like fine art supply stores, like Azel here in Texas. So. Um, not as readily available, but also good. Okay, white pens. So I love the Jelly Roll 08 uh, by Sakura, which is really good. And I like the Uniball um, Signo Broad, which are really good. They kind of get a little ornery with you, but you have to kind of play with them. But it's a really good white pen, and it is also permanent. Really good over watercolors and stuff. All right, now um, pencils. So when we do our drawing class, um, I'll recommend pencils, different weights, uh, different hardnesses, hardnesses. Um, and, but right now just have a couple of pencils on hand. That's great. And then erasers, um, you'll want a kneaded eraser when we do any kind of pencil work. And what it is, is just a little eraser. It's, they're all gray. And when you get a lot of graphite and charcoal around it, you just pull it apart and it cleans it up. And then also you'll want some plastic erasers, these white ones. These are really good. Um, they don't smear, which is, is really good. They're kind of architectural erasers. I love them. And then also I like to have a little, um, it's a rubber cement picker upper is what it is. I don't know what they call them officially, but they've been around for centuries. 
This is really good to use to get goop off, you know, like glue and stuff, and also resist, to get resist off of your watercolors. Stabilo. Get a Stabilo pencil. These are great. They come in 18 different colors. I get a white and a black, and that's all I need. But what it is is a, a really cool, almost a charcoal graphite pencil, and then when you activate it with water, it turns into this beautiful wash. This is great for mixed media. Ugh, definitely. Get a Stabilo, S-T-A-B-I-L-O, Stabilo. Okay, a uh, Tortillon. You can have some of these. They're, um, they, they blend paper. If you get into drawing and stuff, these are good to have, and they come in sets, so these are good. And then um, Resist. This is like a, um, we use these in our watercolor class and they come in, uh, Pebio brings, came with a, came out with a, um, uh, a pen type of Resist. So basically you would paint with it and then let it dry and it dries blue, which is really co cool because you can see it. So this was really good. It also comes in a little tube tub. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. I've seen them at Hobby Lobby. All right, ink pads. So if I had two ink pads to tell you to get and that's all you wanted to get, I would recommend these two. I would recommend the Versafine Black, which is creamy, it doesn't dry, it's permanent, it's amazing. And, and then I would also recommend the Distress Oxide in Vintage uh, Photo by Ranger. And um, this is great for aging paper paper edges and just aging. It's it's awesome. You can use it and then you can also uh, um, activate it with water and it, yeah, it moves around. Distress Ink as well. Vintage Photo is the color. Both of them are great. I, I prefer this one because it is smoother. It goes on more evenly. Um, I don't know. I, I just really like this better than I do like this one. All right, and then um, what else? Foam plates. You can never have too many foam plates. This is a must-have. You can get 100 of these at Kroger for three bucks, so get these. And if you want to, you can get some plastic. Um, for watercolor, you can get some plastic ones, but, you know, you can use the foam plates just as well. All right, did I get everything here? Yes. Okay, uh, some optional things that I would recommend um, would be like, oh, here we go. I shouldn't be picking these up. Um, spray inks. So you can have so much fun with this stuff. Oh my gosh. So, but I, I highly recommend the Dilutions spray inks because they come in such beautiful colors. Uh, Tattered Angels is good, but you can't find those very much anymore. Um, so these are great to have, at, um, optional if you want to. And, um, and then when we start doing some really cute little, I don't know, embellishments and stuff, you'll want to have some embroidery, um, floss, embroidery threads, some multi color ones, and just your favorite colors. And then also, um, you'll want to have different sizes. So I've got these long size needles for boro stitching. I don't know if you're familiar with boro stitching, it's Japanese stitching, like you see on cantha blankets or cantha cantha uh, fabric. Um, so you'll want to have some long ones. You can order these from Amazon. I ordered them from Amazon. Um, and then you'll want to get some small embroidery needles as well. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, look at my notes. Okay. Oh, jewelry tools. Okay. So, so these are some good jewelry tools just to have as part of your, you know, as optional because you'll want it when you do like tassels and little O-rings and stuff, you'll want to have a wire cutter, a uh, round nose plier, and a needle nose plier. That's probably enough to get you going for whatever. Definitely a wire cutter. That's definitely a must have. And then, um, a sewing machine. So I've recently discovered how to, or not how to, but just I've, I've been um, sewing on paper. It's, I love it. And a free motion foot. So I'll show you guys. Um, I did this little thing here and it's from free motion stitching. It's just on a little piece of paper. And what I did was just kind of draw something out. And then I, I use my free motion foot on my, on my, I was going to say on my refrigerator, on my sewing machine. And then I, um, I painted the little flowers. Isn't that cool? I just love the look of it. But you can do so many cool things with your sewing machine, you know. So um, if you get one or if you want one for your birthday, I have the Singer Heavy Duty. So it does beautifully on paper and fabric together. So 
So there you have it, folks. Um, yeah, that's what I recommend. And if you have any questions, go on thewildness.com. There's a list of stuff. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.